Well, it is 6 o'clock and calling to order the regular meeting of the Ohio Planning Commission for November 7, 2018. Members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete the speaker's card and give it to the secretary. Cards are available in the lobby. You should state your name and address for the record, limit your comments to three minutes or less, and I would ask the favor of telling us if you live in the city or not. Comments must be directed to the commission, not the audience, and while the Planning Commission is in session, all in attendance are expected to maintain order and decorum and obey the orders of the chair. Sherry, could we have a roll call, please? Chair Quelsey? Here. Vice Chair Nolan is absent. Commissioners Jagiello? Here. Corbin? Here. Merck? I mean, Merck is absent. Powers? Here. Lottis? Here. Terrific. Thank you. Uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Commissioner Lottis, would you lead us? Thank you. All right, I would call for uh, public communications at this point, but seeing no one in the audience, I think we'll skip right on to the consent item, the minutes of the regular meeting of Planning Commission, October 17th. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I second that. Any discussion? Could we have a roll call, please? Jagiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Kulsi? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lottis? Yes. Thank are you, you here, very much. Are you here for that? Oh. So that's an abstain then. Oh. Abstain. <laughs> so was I able to even second it since I wasn't No, I don't You're think. able to second the motion, but you can't vote on the substance of the I, motion, I think. It's not that it's a big deal. <laughs> that, <laughs> Thank does you, that sound though. right? Yeah. I know for the future. It, yeah. it does. I don't know for sure, though, but if... It, you didn't vote on something you yeah. weren't present Seconding for. a motion in the meeting is appropriate, I think, for anybody in the meeting. But the substance, we'd have to, okay. Right. Anyway. All right, item two, a public hearing item on a text amendment, TA 18-007, to Ojai Municipal Code Section 10-2.405, to amend the solar access standards as part of the City Council's adoption of solar access guidelines pertaining to the protection and enhancement of solar access. Could we hear from staff, please? Thank you, Luke. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. Um, as the subject title explains, this is essentially a zoning text amendment to get the ordinance in sync with the recently adopted solar guidelines where the the substantive change and it gets shown in the ordinance which is attachment a page two of five is changing the standard of how you would calculate really allowable height to not affect neighbor, neighboring properties ability for solar access where this is a switching what was a little more difficult standard to calculate that had a percentage of a distance being 58% and substituting that now with a 30 degree standard. Um, there are diagrams and the guidelines that are given out to the public that demonstrate this and are probably more easily seen in the diagram than explained via text. But that's essentially it, is it's a relatively minor text change to get the code in sync with the guidelines. Um, I did notice one thing I just wanted to clarify, and I noticed it today actually on the attachment B, page 4 of 14, number 6, on the left-hand margin that's referring to figure 5, the last sentence starting with the word correct, I'm assuming that was made at some point in time as a something like we need to correct this, the correct figure five to change 30 degree angle to 58%, it should actually be the opposite. Should be, yes. Is the 58% is the current standard and the change is to get it to a 30 degree angle. So um, just wanted to clarify that for the record. So it's corrected figure five 
to change from 58% to 30 degree angle. Right. It would probably be easier just to delete the whole sentence. Yeah, I because would say it, yes, I, I'm thinking that may have just been a holdover, yeah. almost like somebody accepted track changes when it was, a, but in any yeah. event, that sentence is not correct. We're doing just the opposite. Right. Okay. So um, that concludes staff's report on this on this item. All right. Any questions for staff? Just um, I, as if I, if I remember the conversation in Santa Barbara, they used that in lieu of a height restriction, but we didn't do that. We had a height restriction and the thirty degrees, and then whichever one is more acute is the one that wins. Is that right? Actually, I think this is the Santa Barbara standard. So you you would have height limits right for the zoning, Santa Barbara. yeah. Right. right. That's the, my understanding. Is the height limits, the height limits do not, uh, from my understanding, the height limits do not change the the formula. I mean, it changes the formula, but it it's still thirty degrees from whatever height that Cor you correct have. the the higher so, density. So, so it's not. It, it, well, so if you go it through was a two-story building, and you go through. It whatever. was the two-story building where where that came up, where we made it thirty feet. I mean, twenty-five no. feet. No, it was no. A, it was a. It no, was that's an, a different. Yeah, that's, that's a different, a different thirty. Thing. Yeah, this right. is thirty degrees. This is a the slope to block the solar. Right, access. I understand that, but if I recall the discussion originally when we went from 30 feet to 25, Santa Barbara said they didn't have a height restriction, they only used the 30 degrees. Right. That's what we're doing. We're only using 30 degrees, but we That's still correct. have a height restriction. Yeah, in our, or in our code. I think we do somewhere yes. else in, our, in the code, in the yes. In the code, yes, we have, a, we have our height. That's height. one more of those code cleanup yeah. items to make sure that okay. there's just one standard for building height. Right. right, and there's two base standards you start from. So the higher density residential zoning districts, you start at an 18-foot minimum and then add the 30 degrees. The single-family zoning districts, you start at 12, which is shown in the diagram. Right, right here. You know, so right. pretty much saying in a higher density district, you're probably going to have taller buildings. Right. Right. Okay, well, I, um, are there any other, any other questions of staff or comments on the text amendment itself and the solar access height limitations and the guidelines. No, as I recall the meeting, we had that one um, issue. and I thought we pretty well hashed it out we the did. last time it came through. Exactly, yeah. and I think it's corrected. It looks good. I, I can apply the formula easily, and it makes sense. Okay, I have just one question for staff. Is, is the attachment B solar access height limitations is that the, the solar access packet i guess it is um, we are we are voting on all of that or are we just voting on the text amendment which it, is i think attachment c it's attachment a oh attachment a ordinance. i'm sorry you're right, right. yes yeah, and so yeah, and the sole change is that one on on the bottom of page two of five. That's solely what we're doing tonight is the text amendment change. Okay, but I, it, it, but it seems like it would be appropriate, um, in perhaps in a motion to approve the text amendment that we add the proviso that this sentence be deleted from the access guidelines or whatever I would not see any harm in that I yeah. think that's something it would be good to clean up because that's essentially what's getting handed out to people right right and that's probably what they're gonna look at more than clear we can make it to right. people that walk in the door the better right the 58 percent should be removed from okay. the discussion um, so I'm ready have, to entertain just, a motion oh, I just have one uh, minor Great. I think it I think again it's the switching of the 58 percent with 30 degrees uh, page one of attachment A. It's in the whereas's. It's one, two, three, four, five, five whereas's down. Uh, the way I read it is oh, substituting you're right. 58% for 30. I think, it's, oops, I think it needs to be the. The fifth whereas is backwards again. You are correct. So just and that's even more minor, important since it's in the ordinance, but right. Yes. Right. And, very good. And I, I just have one question since I, I wasn't part of the. The solar access ordinance so so this is only applying to residential zones correct, correct. Mm -hmm. so are we doing anything about solar for commercial and industrial 
Was there any need to do that? Just, I'm just, uh, it's just a curious. I don't know. I know there was a question, I believe, when this went to City Council in uh, September, there was some follow-up about looking at the VMU district, but I hadn't heard anything beyond that, and I don't know that there's anything like sort of in the work program to look at commercial or industrial. Is it that they are larger parcels in general and they don't have a similar issue with blocking solar access? Could be. I don't know. I know there was a lot of reliance on what Santa Barbara does, okay. and I didn't go and read theirs. Okay. That may be it. It could just be the commercial with the higher density again. That could also be why VMU was excluded, because we have a lot of residential use in VMU. But I, it could be the density question, the fact that you okay. have lesser setbacks that make solar harder. Okay. Excellent. So we, we need to make a correction in the fifth whereas of the ordinance that we recommend yeah. and probably a suggestion that we delete that one sentence in the solar access packet. Uh, someone like to make a motion to that effect? Sure. I'll make a motion to um, approve the text amendment. Um, well, let me get to the let me get, yeah, yeah, let yeah. me get to the right. Uh, text Amendment TA 18-007, Ohio Municipal Code 10-2.405, uh, to amend the solar access standards as part of the City Council's adoption of the solar access guidelines. And I would like to uh, uh, change on, pay, on the, in the attachment A, uh, page 1, paragraph 5, um, whereas the city planning staff believes submitting the 58% standard for a 30 degree, that's switched. So we're switching the 30 degree uh, for the 58%. And I would make a recommendation to delete the last line on attachment B, page 4 of 14, which says correct figure 5 to change 30 degree angle to 58%. Okay. Second. Second. Thank you. Any more discussion of the motion? Can we have a roll call, please? Jagiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Wilsey? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lottis? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, we is have. A, uh, um, go chair, ahead, is it appropriate to um, ask Chester a question since he's a builder? I'm just trying to understand this. I think so. Thing. So I'm just curious in your experience building all the houses you build. Um, is there a lot of variance in, in the prior to this <laughs> is the, is the, was the 58% not workable or are people um, all was, over it, the map in <laughs> terms of what they're doing or I have to honestly say that it wasn't ever an issue in any of the projects I've ever worked on. Most of the homes we work on are, have substantial space between each other and it's usually not an issue. Um, it, uh, in the guidelines here, I'm familiar with the Santa Barbara guidelines, it was just confusing on how the formula uh, was being read. So it was more or less educating the public on what those codes were if they had. Now, it, this is fairly new here. There are things that were done, like for instance, my house, I could not do my second story, which I've got a variance and a permit for. Uh, I could not do it with this current ordinance. Uh, because I'm in, in a close-knit neighborhood where um, even though there's a huge tree between me and my neighbor which, would blo which blocks the solar, I still would not be able to do it in here. So in right. the, there are people now that are limited by this ordinance, to, to, especially if they want to do a second story. That's really where it comes into effect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, our, our next item, item three, is a text amendment to the code section 10-2.1709 to clarify the phrase existing legal primary unit includes both legal conforming and legal non-conforming dwellings. Um, just, I'd like to hear from staff on this, but before we do that, I notice that the administrative report at least says, has the same text amendment number on it as the previous item. I have to check here. Mm. Oh, it would not appear on the ordinance yet that we recommend, but this must have a a, a different text amendment number, probably 008, but I don't know for sure. Yeah. I, 
Offhand, I don't know yet. They can't have the same number, though, so that would have to okay. be corrected. Um, at, at any rate, it, once we – oh, yeah, it'll be corrected, I guess, as we recommend the text amendment to the city council. No. It, so it precedes. Oh, okay. Terrific. Yeah. Well. <sighs> you read these things a hundred times, and the 99th time you'll find something. <laughs> so that – I've always, I've, it's been my experience in 40 years of putting briefings together that you'll always find more errors the longer you look. At any rate, could we hear from staff on this text amendment, please? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Uh, again, this is similar in that it is a brief text amendment to the municipal code, which is substantively to see what the changes. It is listed in attachment A, the bottom of page 6. Note to the underlying text, which is clarifying what is meant by an existing legal primary unit, which is used in the table that precedes that note, table A, where you have the six categories of accessory dwelling units. So again, this is clarifying what the existing legal primary unit definition is, and essentially stating that it includes both legal conforming and existing legal non-conforming dwellings, that they're both meant by legal versus something that would be an illegal dwelling. Um, or non-conforming. Right. So it's just it's essentially saying that the legal encompasses both conforming and non-conforming. Right. That's where it's going on that. So, um, again, not a lot of text. I uh, did, even though I wrote the staff report, I did find an error today looking at what uh, I wrote a week ago on page two of three of the staff report where the first full paragraph is sentence starting with four of these types. And I wrote two through five. It should have been two, three, five, and six of the above, where it's talking about accessory dwellings that also relate directly to an existing legal primary unit. So in case anybody caught that, I just wanted to clarify that uh, it shouldn't have been two through five. Uh, category four does not refer to an existing legal primary and, dwelling. And six is home split. Right. But does that say something about existing legal dwelling in it? L existing legal primary unit? Well, I believe if you had a home split, though, the unit then would be within that primary I dwelling. See. Okay. So, yeah, it's... It didn't appear in the column head. That's what I was going correct. by as I read through it. Yeah. And I think I made the same mistake writing it until I went back and looked at it. Um in any event, I uh, just wanted to clarify that. Again, um, if there are any questions, we also now have a city attorney here. Uh, Matt Summers arrived, hopefully. It Welcome. Wasn't. Sorry about the uh, the traffic and the car. No, I, yeah, the cars don't always work when you want them to, but nonetheless, <laughs> apologies for that. Um, I think Luke covered it all. The only additional comment I'll make is that this arose out of some not any particular application, but discussions that arose we had oh, six months ago where it became evident that the council hadn't directly opined as to whether they intended the categories in Table A that speak to ADUs being added to existing legal primary units, whether that was meant to cover existing legal conforming, existing legal non-conforming, or both. And staff considered it and recommends that it is consistent with the broad direction throughout the general plan, the housing element, and council prior direction to promote affordable or uh, accessory dwelling units as a species of housing, that it makes sense to define existing legal used here as including both legal conforming and legal non-conforming, with the exception, of course, as noted, of item of units, rather, that are rendered legal non-conforming via the compliance program, because in that case, their initial status was illegal. They were unpermitted and they were given a legal status, one step uh, to the positive. They couldn't, they can't then iterate themselves to, as if they had been built from scratch perfectly. Um, so that was the genesis of this item. Thank you. Okay. Any, any questions for staff? I think that concludes the report. If okay. there are any questions, be happy to answer. Thank you. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Um, as, as I sent a note to you, Luke, um, the phrase existing legal primary unit also appears over on page 7 of 10 in paragraph 1F. And I wondered if we ought to, I think that's the place. I'm sorry, it's uh, 
paragraph E on page 7 of 10, about six lines down. I wondered if we ought to move the definition that is in note 2, we could do note 1 as well, and move it back up into the paragraph B where it has the definitions of other terms used in this standard. Uh, otherwise, we need at least to add some footnotes in the column heads of two, three, five, and you said six, um, because there, there are no footnotes that refer to note two. There's a footnote in accessory structures, the first row on the page of page six of 10. There is a footnote there that refers you to note one, but there weren't any that referred you to note two. Um, and so I don't care which way we do it, except that having the same phrase defined in note two appear outside the table made it seem to me like we ought to have that definition outside the table as well. Yeah, my own, I, w I would agree that I think where terms are defined in general, that's often, I know that's where I'll go to, is to a definition section to at least see if the term is defined. Yeah. And if it's only defined in a note elsewhere, you may not come across it. I mean, there's always that chance. I mean, here, because we're looking at it and it's underlined, it jumps out at you. Right. But once it's adopted, it's not going to be underlined. It will not anymore. be underlined. So yeah. um, I'm yeah. also happy to defer if uh, yeah, Matt's maybe. got any comments. But it, it, cross-referencing is, I think, a good idea. Yeah. I, 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 I would, don't have a problem with that I would just that suggest that both note one and note two being definitions, they, those both terms be moved to the definitions section, paragraph B instead. Uh, otherwise, um, oh, uh, and one other thing, you were, you were right to call out that uh, uh, column four is different. There's the phrase legal, existing legal accessory building. Now, there we could have legal conforming and legal non-conforming because accessory buildings could be non-conforming with respect to setbacks, for example. Should we have a definition, a, a corresponding definition for existing legal accessory building that follows the same track as the note two definition? Mr. City Attorney? I think that's fine as well. I mean, the, the clear intent will be the same. And absent that, we would have applied that as evidence of the council's intent. But I think you're right that it would be clear if we Define existing out. legal accessory structure yeah. to mean the same. Okay. Or accessory building, rather. S accessory structure is separately defined in note one. We, we can, that would, I think, add clarity and thus be a good move. Terrific. Uh, just one last note uh, on page eight of 10, paragraph J3C. Um, I saw the word dispensation. I thought. Perhaps what was meant there was disposition, but that's, those are both sort of legal terms, and I would ask the city attorney, did I miss that? Should, is dispensation appropriate there, dispensation of the estate, or is, is disposition, it's the word I'm more, more used to seeing. Yeah, my initial reaction, I think it should be disposition. Um, let me double check what we, we're thinking when we wrote that section, um, and that we we can. I mean, I think it probably should be disposition. Okay, that it being section be two of the ordinance, it is part of the text amendment. Honestly, it is, they yeah. seem like synonyms, so I. Dissolution of this estate. Or dissolution. I mean, well, to some extent, it, this con yeah. it, they're all sort of synonyms. Mm -hmm. um, I thought of dispensation as something that you gave to someone that you yeah. Right, and that, I mean, that's one way of looking at it, certainly. Um, one also dispenses, you also dispense the proceeds from the estate. That's true. Uh, we could, we're happy to, to correct the text, whatever the commission's pleasure. Be happy to take your, your advice on that one. Uh, I otherwise think at the moment, I think the language we have now is, is okay as it is. Yeah, I, don't I, I think it is. But, okay. But, you know, it's a okay. commission. Uh, my last question is in, on the same page, 8 of 10, paragraph K at the very end, 
before the subparagraphs. It says pursuant to Article 13. Is that 10-2.13XX or? I uh, wasn't yes, so sure. That reference is to all of Article 13, which is uh, Title 10, Chapter 2, Article 13. Okay. And those sections within. Okay. Yeah. I think it might be better to write that out, Title 10. Uh, uh, yeah, that's Chapter that 2, fine. Article 13. Or is that the way we go? Titles, chapters, articles, I think. And then sections? Or they're all sections? Um, the code is inconsistent, but they're all, the top level is all titles. Right. Below the titles, some titles are title, article, chapter, section. Others are title, chapter, article, section. Oh, it's okay. It's fun medley. Well, one more thing to clean up. We will, yeah. <laughs> we'll um, get it labeled correctly. Anyway, I think it would be better to just spell that out in more detail because most of the people that come in aren't going to know. I didn't know. Um, any other questions for staff? Um, with with the, uh, I'd be willing to entertain a motion at this point, with or without the corrections that we have discussed here tonight. I'll make a motion to um, approve text amendment TA 18-007 to the OMS six. six. Yes, it is okay. six. It is Sherry six. Sherry clarified it's that Okay, for got us. it. Six. Um, code section 10-2.1709 and to clarify that phrase existing legal primary unit includes both legal conforming and legal non-conforming dwellings with the suggestion to well the uh, with the removal of those definitions on page uh, attachment A, page 6 of 10, uh, taking the notes at the bottom and putting them into the definition section of um, attachment A, page 2 of 10, section B. Any other dispensation, I'm fine with that. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and... Uh, um a definition of an existing legal accessory building along the same lines as note two. Right, right. Be added into the into the into the into section B. Yes. Okay. Any go ahead. I'll second that. Terrific. Okay. Any discussion of the motion? Sherry, could we have a roll call, please? Jagiello? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Wilsey? Yes. Powers? Yes. Lottis. Yes. Terrific. All right, uh, item four, informational items, uh, director decisions. Um, I wanted to thank staff, Luke in particular, for organizing this so that we know what kinds of director decisions these are. It makes it a lot easier to understand rather than just trying to flip through them in chronological order. So Luke and whoever in your area might have been uh, responsible for this change, it's terrific from my point of view. Thank you very much. I suspect Sherry had a hand in it. Very much so. Okay, anything that you'd like to point out for us in particular from the director decisions? Um, I think if there's questions, I'd field them, but I don't think there was anything noteworthy in there. I, I had one, one question on temporary use permits for Ojai Valley Community Hospital and, and Chris Rock. Is that the Chris Rock? I saw that and I didn't remember oh. the Chris Rock at that. So, <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, I was just I was just curious. It, it says the project address, which is the hospital address. But what are they? Where are they actually holding this 5K and 10K run and walk? Wasn't it down Ohio Avenue and throughout? It's, it so they just register at the hospital. They go across the street and they run through oh, the, the residential neighborhood behind Vaughn's oh. and go down the bike trail, go up the back way down the oh, bike, and okay. then come back and end at Nordoff. All right. And they do it okay. twice for the 10K. The I couldn't believe they're doing it anywhere on Maricopa Highway, but it wasn't clear from, you know, from the just, listing where any of this like was happening. Valerio to Nordoff is the, that's, Valerio to Nordoff yeah. is like one yeah. okay. block or. Okay. I've done that, yeah. 
Okay. Well, can let's. I, can I ask oh, a question? Oh, go ahead, Bobby. Under um, the 402B North Blanche new accessory dwelling unit deed restriction, is a deed restriction required for um, new, new yeah. ADUs? With the yes. new ADUs, yes. And I think that's. Not compliance programs, but yes. For new ADUs. Yeah, I think there's. You get a deed restriction? What does it say? It needs to be remain owner occupied. Right. The oh, property. okay. Yeah, I think three of them at least have the related to ADUs. Um, 1434 Ohio Avenue does Grandview. There's the deed restriction reference, which is in the code. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got that. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you very much. That's what the deed restriction is. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, let's move on to item five, uh, future agenda items. And um, I see on the 5th of December, that's, oh, that's right. Thanksgiving week meeting is canceled. The next one, 5th of December, the Tesla folks are coming back. And we have a new item, hedges, fences, and walls. Oh, that's always a good one. Pardon me? That's a good one. That's, hedges, fences, uh, and walls. Sure is. Oh, my. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's one I live with every day, trying to get out of my neighborhood. Edges and fences and walls all but, <laughs> Yes, right, of course. Um, one thing I noticed when I, this is some time ago, when I did a, a um, scan of the code for hedges, for fence, for wall, I found it in many places, not just in Title 10. Um, is it the intent of this item to to discuss text amendments to Title 10 or Title 10 and elsewhere, or consolidating other parts of the code that, re that cover this topic into Title 10, or what, what did you have in mind there? I would say anything on your mind, it's, it's topic driven, not what section of the code is it. So. Okay. This went to the city council October 23. I don't know if anyone watched it. If not, you could. Um, and I had just given a brief presentation because I know it's a pretty global issue. There's sort of the enforcement and safety side, and I'll probably be saying this again soon. And then there's sort of the community aesthetic side. What do you want your community to look like, which is mostly driven by interface of the front yard and the street. And everything being eclectic around here. True. Or do you want it to remain eclectic? That's sort of the, yeah. what do you want Ohio to look like? And uh, the presentation to council, I didn't dwell much on safety because I think that's, it's largely an enforcement issue. And it's largely a, unless you think there's provisions in the code that should be enhanced or changed related to safety, I think the more, you know, problematic issue-driven discussion is Height, do you treat fences and walls the same as hedges, say, for instance? Height um, and setback, yeah. So really, all, yeah, and you know, and then you have sort of the issue of hedges being living things, not defined, although I think most people could say they know what a hedge is, but you can probably get into a gray area there. But they grow and have to be maintained. A fence and walls built once. If you build it right, presumably you don't have a code or a safety problem a hedge can become one and people may also feel differently about something that is living versus something more structural so uh, my long answer is if there's i see this as an issue driven discussion to kind of like citywide should different areas of the city be treated differently that's you know we'll we'll also have the example that was in the um report to council of what city of Santa Barbara again is doing because they have a much more detailed guideline, for instance. Um, would something like that be an option? Because right now the OHI code is again fairly rigid with you can do this, you can't do that. And most, most cases these three items are all treated alike, though in terms of a setback from a right of way, he, uh, a hedge is not treated like a fence or a wall in that category. They don't have a required setback, for instance, and a fence and a wall do. Um, so that's what I think we're looking for in the discussion, though I think we also got some clear direction from city council on things like that setback, which would 
entail a code change. Once again, it's that that's the public safety aspect of it, I think. The Actually, we're talking about there's there's a safety component where you've got the view triangle at intersections, but there's also just an issue of you're limited to a three foot height period for fences, hedges, and walls. But where you have a fence or a wall, regardless of what type, split rail, picket fence, something you'd typically see out at the edge of a sidewalk, mm -hmm. that's required to have a five foot setback which is, I've seen in a short time, even that being an issue where somebody has a low 50% open fence. Who cares? And they have to set it back five feet. Yeah. And that's now in the code. Do you want to keep that in the code? Um, so, you know, things like that where it's not really a safety issue. This can be an interior lot that creates no visibility issues, and a lot of people want it, as we've heard. My dogs, my children, I just want to delineate public from private. Right, right now, you got to be five feet back to do that. So um, I'll probably do the same brief PowerPoint, but we just try to have examples of things where you you can show people, here are photos of a streetscape. Do you like it? And the answer is generally yes. And you'd say, well, you can't do that in Ojai. <laughs> so that was it. But okay. I think any other thing, I know this has been a topic for several years, is to have sort of a global discussion or anything even more detailed. Okay. Well, I hope the folks that are watching tonight will take note of the fact that we're going to talk about hedges, fences, and walls then on December 5th. And uh, let's, let's hear from the public on this issue as well. Um, hedges are also different from bushes, as I understand it. I come out of my neighborhood at the corner of Mallory and Aliso, and if I look to the east down Aliso, there's a very clear hedge there. There's a, a number of the same kind of plant, kind of roundish and all of that, all planted together that obscures the view of traffic. Looking to the west, there's a low stone wall, which is fine. But then there's a great big bush growing right behind the wall and partially over the wall, which just does e an equally effective job of blocking your view of the traffic. But I don't remember seeing bushes anywhere in here. They're just, they're living things that are unregulated, right? True, and I think and also where, where we're talking about safety, like you're essentially at the intersections where you're really concerned yeah. and you have right. the examples in the code with the view triangle. <clears throat> now, that eliminates anything of a certain height, whether you want to call it a bush, a hedge, a fence, a wall, or a tree that isn't trimmed up. So oh, that's it, essentially okay. saying you need a clear view you can be no more than three feet in height, and if it's a tree, it has to be at least eight feet to the bottom of the canopy. So you've essentially created this corridor between three feet and eight feet. That goes beyond fences, hedges, and walls again because it's a safety issue. Yes. But where we're talking in, say, the front yard or front setback, which is also a discussion point when we say front yard and setback, do we mean the same thing? Because often when you say a setback, you think about what is a required setback. But the way the code currently reads and the diagrams in there, it's establishing your front setback for purposes of a fence hedge or wall as being from, say, the edge of the sidewalk to the closest face of a wall. Which So it's really dependent on how close you built your house to the sidewalk. So you, yes. your neighbor could be 20 feet away, you could be 50 feet away. The three-foot height limit, and I realize I'm getting into something in December now, um, it's again, it's another issue with would you want to clarify that because you could be treating next door neighbors differently in terms of how high they could have one of these things based on the positioning of their house, not their setback requirement. Okay. So again, there's a lot of issues. It can on the become top. an emotional issue in the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question, Ray. Is this discussion we're going to have in December? Um, limited to residential neighborhoods? Yeah. I don't think it has to be. That's clearly been the focus because the regulations, again, on like height and setbacks, they're not solely limited to residential. And certainly the safety issue has nothing to do with that. So, I mean, I, I would just encourage, especially if there are issues you have identified or thought about, that we get those out there and discuss them. Okay. Um, well, personal experience is is have, being that I live right down the block on Blanche, 
when I hit Ojai Avenue and want to make a left-hand turn, there's a hedge there at, at Bank of America. You can't see anyone that's coming down that hill without pulling out into the crosswalk and into the street a little. Or always making a right turn like I do. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it is a legitimate issue, I think, too, with a three-foot height limitation, too, with hedges. Most plants, as they mature, want to get taller than that. Sure. And there are plenty of hedges that I think look good and look maintained. They're probably four or five feet high, not three. Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, I think that the, you could delineate this many ways, but I think the safety issue versus the aesthetic and community appearance issue, those are kind of the major dividing lines on the topic. Yeah. I, I was at that city council meeting that you referenced October 23rd, and uh, you mentioned the fact that, in my view, the three-foot height limit should be from the road grade, not the yard grade, wherever that is, whether it's higher or lower. The whole point of the public safety is so that drivers can see over, over hedges at corners. So the road to, grade, not the up above the curb grade. Right. Um, and that's difficult for someone who's, whose yard is above the road. It gets easier for someone whose yard is below the road, and there are some of those long foothill, for example. And we're going to talk about this in yeah, December. Yeah. This. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is, okay. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, <laughs> I was just stepping in to do okay. so. Okay. And it was um, part of my report from the Ohio City Council. Oh, it was. Oh, sorry. very good. All right. <laughs> At any rate, I'd I'd ask a personal favor if it's if it's not too extensive, like not more than ten pages or so. If there is a Santa Barbara guideline or ordinance or something on hedges, fences, and walls, perhaps you could provide that as part of the packet for the fifth. It will be. Okay, very good. Uh, Planning Commission committee reports and comments. Uh, and I think what we're talking about is liaison reports from folks that were elsewhere. Okay, City Council meeting, October 23rd. Many issues. I will not speak about all of them. Um, two of the most important issues were obviously fences, walls, and hedges. Stay tuned for more on that. I think we've done enough. Um, the first of four uh, meetings addressing the districting issue was um, on the 23rd. And um, I don't know if everybody knows about that. They probably do. Um, Electing city council members by district rather than at large. Exactly. And um, that's a tough one for a town that's as tiny as this one um, and comes up and causes a lot of issues. And in typical runaway legal fashion, um, it could get very costly if we don't address that issue. So um, city has what's called a 90 day safe harbor period during which time they can look into the issue without being penalized. And um, that's the intention right now of the four meetings to address a, dem a demographer is, has been hired to help determine what those districts might actually be. Um, it seems that the intention is um, addressing a equal voice for the Latino community, and it would probably be hard without doing some um, real weird configurations to try and get them all into one group. So, um, there, there was some talk at the meeting about um, the legislature giving relief for this for cities with populations under 10,000, um, but we had, don't have it that yet. It hasn't happened yet. No, yeah. and so we're subject to um, the demise of this thing, which is pretty unfortunate as, as I see it. Um, there was discussion of the Libby Bowl and how that's working, cannabis manufacturing and micro businesses, fences and walls, 
taxis and some new software for the city. And that was that, three hours and 33 minutes later. Do we know any election results? Yes, I, there, there's an app you can actually get on your phone oh. called VC Elections, uh, and I took a look at it this morning. It said the that Johnny Mr. Johnson There are no elected. official results yet, just to note that point. We're sitting as city officials yeah, the, talking the, about things. I might suggest everything folks has look to, to be the certified. County, yeah. Look to the county for the unofficial results available on the county's app, yeah. um, but I would caution against stating any results in this context because they are not None of them are official. We have unofficial results at this time, just to yeah. caution you. Can I? Yeah. Thank you. May I yes, change, sure. change the subject and tell the Commissioner Jagiello that the November 14th Bill and Appeals Board was canceled this week. Oh, good. Thank you. Excellent. Could I ask a brief question? And I will sure. look at the um, video. Is Libby Bull working? In for council's expectations? Um, there were some issues with the um, the current company that's dealing with it. Um, one was the city was um, disturbed that the city logo was not on all the publication materials and there was some confusion as to what that meant. Um, there was discussion of a sign being put up with the venue, with what was you know, gonna be the billings, and there was some public opinion about that and whether that would be appropriate or inappropriate. They were um, talking about a monument type sign in Libby Park. A lighted sign. A, a, well, the first well, sign that was, yeah. the first sign that was shown was just like a rock wall mm -hmm. with a hand sign, but then there was some large huge else, lit up fancier. thing that um, seemed kind of the first thing though they it, it, the sort of thing that you might see in front of Nordoff High School it says upcoming events you know just a thing with a glass and you stick the letters inside sort of thing right but it was embedded in like a right. rock thing right. so it, it looked sort of natural somewhere like near the entrance to Libby Park and I didn't get the feeling people were all that excited about that particular thing but no but I, I couldn't tell whether there was confusion between that and that lit up thing <laughs> that was shown because yeah. I don't know where that was supposed to be it was all directed for, for, for further study and no final decisions were made. right right uh, part in part I think mindful of the fact that there's a variety of ideas okay. but no concrete proposals and and then the other issue that was discussed was a how many events they could have B how to charge for those events um, a flat fee because it was done in a different way this is the city so charging far. the venue promoter not right. charges to the people attending right Excellent. so those were the issues they talked about okay. were, they, were they overall happy with the performance in terms of the um, revenue generated for the city i think they were happy that there were more um, scheduled events that the Canyon Club or Sterling or whatever they're called Sterling Entertainment I had think it's called, yeah. had done, but they were disappointed that there were fewer community events being held at Libby Bowl. That there were only half as many as the previous year, so that the community wasn't necessarily taking advantage of that venue. Yeah, well, the, the nonprofits that don't charge admission to their events are still paying right. for use of the bowl, right. and that's increasingly difficult. And then on and off throughout the meeting, there was a lot of discussion about cannabis consumption at the entrepreneur event that was supposed to be held on the 26th, and I don't at a, know. At a motel on the East End somewhere. Yeah, Casa Ojai, and I don't know how that ultimately played out. That one but is... But it came in and out, like, throughout the <laughs> right. whole meeting. It wasn't on the agenda. An individual attempted to put it on the agenda. He failed as, as the council had no authorization to add it to the agenda. The event was held. Uh, as far as I can tell, there were no major concerns. It was held. It was rather sparsely attended. 
I think in part reflecting some challenges the promoter had faced. Um, law enforcement was present. I don't think any arrests were made. Okay, thank you. End of report. End of report. Okay, there being no other reports due, is there any, any other business before the board? Or the, excuse me, the commission. Oh, I just want to mention uh, uh, an event that is happening at Libby Bowl on December 1st, um, which is called Remembrance. It's a celebration of the community's resilience the last year since the Thomas fire. So there's going to be um, quite a few uh, music groups at Libby Bowl and then in, within the park, there's going to be something like 35 service organizations that are still providing assistance to um, people who are in need uh, post the Thomas fire. So that's happening on December 1st in Libby Park and at Libby Bowl. Okay. Roughly 11 to 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 6 p.m., something like that. That's a Saturday. Mm. Uh, one other, if we're doing public service announcements here, the uh, American Legion is uh, celebrating Veterans Day on Saturday, or Sunday, right? The 11th, Sunday. Um, they will have uh, meals for sale. They're free to veterans and, and uh, nominal cost to other people, soup, salad, I'm not sure what else right now, that kind of thing. And the posters, uh, commemorating Ojai Valley veterans that you often see around the tennis courts at July 4th or Memorial Day will be up around the American Legion Hall which is down on the east end of town so all right there being no other business before the board it is 753 and we are adjourned <laughs>